Today is Sunday, October the 16th, 2016. And I just got the story that came across my desk just now. It's a crazy story out of Orange County, North Carolina, in the town of Hillsboro. Now, what happened was a Republican Party headquarters got firebombed, right? See, North Carolina has a Republican Party, and then they have different headquarters and different offices and whatnot throughout the state. You know, they do things like uh, they may go to door to door at Canvas. They go out there and put out yard signs for people, uh, local politicians, of course, Donald Trump, et cetera. And this particular office was set up in the more liberal area to try and expand the Republican Party to individuals that may not have been exposed to it due to lack of outreach. So they had their offices there and then they get firebombed by people apparently who do not like Republicans because there was some graffiti on the side of the wall. I'll show you all of that in a little bit because what I have right now is a clip, I think, from the local news there in North Carolina and it interviewed the man, I guess, who was in charge of the actual headquarters of the Republican Party in Orange County, a man named Daniel Ashley. Now, the young lady will interview him and she'll talk to him and then you'll be able to see the damage and you also be able to see the graffiti that accompanied the arson because this was like a firebomb attack, a Molotov cocktail was involved. So you'd be able to see the damage from the smoke, some of the fire and also the graffiti. So without further ado, go ahead and roll it. Okay, I am here with Chairman Daniel Ashley. He is the chair of the Orange County Republican Party. Um, give us an idea of what we're dealing with right now. Okay, as you can see, uh, a lot of top cocktail or something was thrown through this window last night. Uh, sometime during the night, it landed in the floor and it uh, started fire with it on the floor, the carpet, and on these sofas here. Uh, like I said, everything got smoked. We're very fortunate that everything did not get burnt. The fire eventually smoked itself out, but everything is smoke damage or it was definitely strong heat in here because a lot of the uh, items are melted. In fact, our printer there is melted. Um, mm -hmm. We just got a lot of cleanup to do. Uh, it's not going to deter us. Like I said, I mean, we're going to be starting back tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. uh, getting ready for early voting Thursday. And uh, we'll be here maybe all night, but we'll definitely be back here in the morning to uh, start cleaning up. And we're gonna set up outside. We've got the bus to uh, operate out of, and we'll probably operate out from underneath the uh, canopy here also tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So give us an idea of everything that y'all have lost in this. Well, mostly all of our signs, about all the signs as you can see here, the extra signs. And we put out a big sign day yesterday. We was gonna have another one this week to get out most of the signs. The ones here in the office are uh, basically ruined. They are uh, uh, our sample ballots we put together yesterday. Uh, we got them outside. I've got to assess them some more to see whether, you know, how many of those we actually can save. We had like 2,500 sample ballots already marked and ready to uh, uh, give out at early voting. Uh, all of our uh, just any of our, uh, uh, as you can see, even the heat pen here, the heat pen here, this point, just the heat from it, the heat pens even melted. Uh, just the smoke damage, just all the computer. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure it's probably gone. Our telephone is melted. You can't see the, you can't see any of the calling functions on it. So uh, basically, it's just destroyed. We just got to start all over. But we will be uh, up and running tomorrow. What did they, uh, can you tell everyone what they wrote on the side of the building? Uh, on the side of the building it says, Nazi Republicans leave town or else. Mm -hmm. And then it got swastikas uh, on both sides of those. And it wasn't a small child because the person who wrote the, uh, the, the language on the building uh, is high enough where they had to be a pretty tall person. It had to be taller than I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so y'all are not letting this get in the way of any of y'all. Definitely, of definitely, efforts. definitely not. We will not be intimidated. Mm -hmm. This right here is just an intimidation tactic, and we will not be intimidated. We made a concert effort four years ago to keep this office open 12 months a year. We said that if we were going to make an inroads into a liberal county as Orange County, that we had to have a presence 12 months out of the year, not just on the election time. So we made a concert effort to. to uh, 
to raise funds to do what we need to do to uh, keep this office open 12 months a year. And uh, it's really paid off, and I think we've let some people know that we're in town mm -hmm. because they want to run us out of town and we're not going anywhere. Yeah. And tomorrow y'all are going to be up and running um, outside, right? Outside, yes. Um, can you tell everyone the address just in case anyone wants 347. to it's 347 J Max, J A, oh, Max, M A X, Drive, it's Hillsboro, North Carolina. Thank you. Okay, and everyone here is the Sloan Family the Damage. Mm. Mm. Man. Yeah, I don't like it, but we have a presence in here. This is a this is a badge of honor to a certain extent. It's a badge of honor. Because they know we're here. Yeah. Mm. Hey. Okay, so you're able to see that you saw the, the crazy destruction. I mean, they had all of the you know the yard signs pretty much destroyed, if not from the fire, from being melted, from the smoke damage, you can't use them anymore. There's a lot of stuff that got destroyed on the inside. Because if you caught at the end, he said that it's a badge of honor because the people that are opposing them know that they are there and they feel threatened. They're triggered by the whole situation. They're upset that the Republican party is there and it really exposes the Democrats for who they are. Like I said in the previous video about the WikiLeaks emails and John Podesta and his race realism, it lifts the hood of the car of the Democrat party, but it also lifts their hood, their robes off of their bodies. So you can see exactly who they are, right? This is what's going on. And you saw the graffiti, you know, Republicans get out, et cetera, with the Nazi swastika. Now, my question is, is that swastika to represent the Republicans who they're trying to fight against? Or is it their own logo? Is that their calling card? The people that actually did the firebombing and the graffiti? <laughs> the mess? That's kind of what it seems like to me. Because like I said before in the previous video, the Nazis were a far left movement. They would do stuff like that. They firebomb you. They come with the, the brown shirts and whatnot and get you on out of there. Secret police, Gestapo, all of that. That was their whole thing. That's what they did in order to maintain the country that they wanted. But I digress. You get the whole point here of the Democrat Party being the ones that are violent. But Hillary Clinton seems to want to tell us all the time that it's the Republicans and Donald Trump have all the anger. They're the ones that are out there causing all the problems at these rallies. They're the ones out there destroying neighborhoods and whatnot. But, I, you know, I can't really tell because when you turn on the TV and there's always some kind of riot over some black person that gets killed by police or killed by a person that's not black. There's never any riots over black on black violence. Well, for the most part, until the person was a black cop that killed a black person, then maybe the riot, maybe just like a situation of uh, what was that? Philando Castile. Or one of them guys, I forget his name, but one of the guys got killed by a black officer. Now, I'm not quite sure if they rioted or not. They may have because it doesn't even really matter. They think, OK, police officer, you're not black anymore. But I digress off that point. Whole point here is that it seems to always be the Democrats, people on the left that are engaged in the violence. Hillary Clinton and the people on the left want to say that it's us on the right that are inciting the violence. But I can't tell. I can't tell. I mean, look at Baltimore, Maryland. Look at uh, L.A., New York, Philly, all these race riots, all this violence against police, all just the regular extreme violence is always people on the left. You never really see a Trump supporter going out here and doing something to somebody. <laughs> I was having this discussion the other day and then somebody tried to tell me, what about the guy that got beat up at the rally? I'm like, somebody got beat up at a Trump rally, like a Trump supporter beat up a non-Trump supporter at a rally. That happened. It's like, yeah, remember the, the man that sucker punched the, the young black male? I mean, you mean the 80-year-old man that punched the 21-year-old? That punch probably didn't even do nothing. He probably didn't even really feel it. <laughs> but I've seen video after video after video of Trump supporters being bloodied up, beat up, you know, chased, beat down, robbed, stomped. In this case, they get firebombed. You got marches all around the country talking about pigs in the blanket, from like bacon, all kind of extremely violent and divisive rhetoric that comes from the left but i'm to be told that it's the right that are the ones that are violent it doesn't make any sense this is just another incident of the left being violent against the right now luckily thank god nobody was hurt in the situation it was only damage to property and mr ashley said that he'll still be able to continue because they still have i guess they have a bus they'll still be able to do that they'll still be able to be outside of their actual establishment to conduct business and if you want to leave them a donation to help whatever they got to get done 
I'll leave a link to them in the description box below. I'll leave an address to their actual location and I'll also leave some contact information for the North Carolina Republican Party if you're able to get something going that way. So what do you think? Do you think this is another incident of the left behaving badly as usual? It's not much of a difference from what they normally do all around the country. It doesn't even really matter about race of the individual committing a crime. We see the basic didn't do riots in city to city. We see the more advanced stuff that comes from the federal government with the whole WikiLeaks situation. You know, the race realism, all of that kind of stuff involved with the government behind the closed doors. We see pay for play with Hillary Clinton and the Clinton Crime Foundation. There's been evidence of quid pro quo in WikiLeaks. We see all kind of voter fraud on a national level, local level, etc. We see the media colluding with the presidential candidate Hillary Clinton and the Clinton Crime Foundation and the Democratic National Convention. We see them colluding with each other to keep themselves in power, to keep all of their jobs intact and to be able to keep the right and especially Donald Trump out of there. Because if Trump, like I said in a previous video, if Trump was to be espousing the virtues of the left or at least be able to play along, play ball like Mitt Romney did, it wouldn't be so much hateful rhetoric against him because you never saw all this against Mitt Romney. You know, you, ne you didn't really see it because he was a company guy. He was a jobber. But now you got Donald Trump. He threatens to ruin that whole paradigm that they've been able to sustain with the establishment. And there's only one establishment. It's not even really a party thing. It's one establishment. So he comes along and threatens that. So they got to do whatever they can. Violence, corruption, just straight criminal law breaking. They'll do whatever they can. Cultural Marxism. Uh, lying on TV, bringing up people from the past that accuse people of doing things they didn't do. They'll do all those things because they're desperate at this point. This is just one more thing, but that's pretty much all I got to say about it. I mean, do you think I'm correct in my assertion or am I wrong? And if so, then how am I wrong? Give me an example of when the right, when people that support Trump, people that are not liberals have done things like this. You know, this is the kind of stuff that happened back in the 60s when you had civil rights going on and people were opposing it. And it's ironic that the Republicans voted more for civil rights than the Democrats did. So who's really opposing what? I can't really tell. You tell me. Leave your comments in the box below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share and subscribe. Peace.